set the stage for what is this morning going to be, we know, another exciting and interesting encouragement from our minister. And we know that as you have been seeing the thread running through this morning's service of the theme of children, we're in child month. So I know that Reverend John has for us some interesting and enlightening theme around child month celebrations this month. So please help me welcome our minister, our pastor, Reverend John Scott, the beloved. Thank you, Jen, and good morning, family, worldwide. A joy to add my own words of welcome to this morning's celebration on a beautiful Jamaican morning. And those of you overseas, the sun is shining. I hope spring is warming up for you. It's beautiful here in beautiful Jamaica. And since it's Child Month, as Jennifer shared, I have titled my encouragement this morning, We Must Become as little children. We must become as little children. And the thing I love about children is their candor. So teacher asks little Harold um, a, a question in class. She says, Harold, what do you call a person who keeps on talking when people are no longer interested? Harold thinks for a moment and says, a teacher. I'm glad he didn't say a minister. <laughs> and then there's the one about little Johnny who asked his grandma how old she was. I believe he must have been at the temple last Sunday for Carol Campbell's wonderful encouragement on aging. But the grandmother, who most certainly was here, said, oh, about 39 and, and holding. So little Johnny thought for a little while and said, grandma, how old would you be if you let go? <laughs> I've got to tell you, my friends, I went home, and after listening to Carol, and I looked in the mirror, and yep, there was her little old lady. She didn't even bother to change sex. Looking right back at me, I said, honey, we have work to do. <laughs> but I really wonder, my friends, what would be our experience if we learned to let go? To let go of fear, to let go of doubt, to let go of judgment, to let go of self-criticism, because that's a big one, you know, we're always criticizing ourselves. That's why we look in the mirror and, you know, look at every, every, every laugh line and every wrinkle in a panic. What if we could let go and hold firmly to the truth that we are the beloved of something so awesome, so beautiful, so joyful, that if we could just get that in our heads and hold it there, our lives would have a whole different complexion, a whole different rhythm, a whole different ethos as a race of people. We need to learn to have fun. We need to learn to go back and become as little children. And I love the laughter yoga, childlike but wonderful way of showing approval. So let us show approval of ourselves this morning with the laughter yoga applause. And many of you know it, but for those of you that don't, I'll demonstrate. You simply clap your hands, making certain your fingers are um, in alignment so that it simulates your, your acupuncture points. And you do it three times. You go, very good, very good, very good. And throw your hands into the air with wild abandon and say, yay, like I do after our, our temple song most Sundays. So let us do it three times together. Very good, very good, very good, yay. Very good, very good, very good, yay. Very good, very good, very good, yay. How did that feel? Good. Wonderful. Very good, that's how it felt. Whenever I do a blessing of babies here at the temple, I usually share the Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese American artist and poet who wrote this wonderful 
the prophet. And he says about children, and I quote, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters, I love this, of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, note, they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. Life goes not backwards. Life is evolving. Life is going forward, my friends, forever and ever expanding. We believe that this life is an upward spiral of light and laughter and joy, and that it is forever and ever expanding. And perhaps this is why, my friends, the beautiful Jesus says in Matthew 19, verse 14, that we must suffer little children to come unto him. And he says, forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. So every time I look at a little child, I think, yes, this is the kingdom of God in radiant expression. This little thing, maybe five or six or eight, however, knows who they are. Can we just stop teaching them to fear and teaching them to be judgmental and critical and just teach them to be who they truly are, the sons and daughters of the Almighty. And you know, if we just left them to develop as they were meant to, they would grow in this. Joan Borisenko uh, has, is an author who wrote a book called Seven Paths to God. And she points to a penetrating study by Harvard theologian James Fowler on how we develop the faith of a child. You know, ch children just trust. We talked about how, Grandma, how old would you be if you let go? Children have just let go. They express their anger, their, their, their joy, their hurt, um, whatever they're feeling. They express it in the moment, and then they let it go. It doesn't, it doesn't linger. We, they don't hold on to things. And this Harvard theologian traces the development of the child towards this, what Joan Borisenko calls a universalizing faith, a faith that is able to let go and let God. And according to Dr. Fowler, there are six stages of psycho-spiritual growth uh, in relationship to the development of a child's faith. Before the age of seven, Little children live in an imaginative world populated by angels, fairies, demons, and monsters. In addition, children before the age of seven imitate the people around them. So in a way, they begin to create an image of God in the image of their caregivers. So if they are subject to criticism and bickering in the home and judgmental statements from the people who are in charge of them, they develop a concept of God as being a critical and judgmental and punishing God. And they, many of us live our lives with that concept that the wrath of God is never far off and that some kind of uh, entity is watching us and writing down our names for every mistake we make, nonsense. And then between seven and puberty, Children go through a second stage of psychological development in which they tend to see things in black and white. Everything is either good or bad, you know. And that's a stage which hopefully doesn't last too long because they see God as kind of like a bit of a Santa Claus. If you're good, you get rewarded, and if you're not good, you get punished. At puberty, and this is the age I find most interesting, Young people enter a third developmental stage in which they begin to think for themselves. Those of us that have teenagers in our life know that this can be a very, very difficult stage. Not for them, except we make it difficult for them, but for ourselves. 
who are responsible for their nurturing and their, and their, their care. Because it is at this time that the teenager begins to look beyond the beliefs of family and to identify more strongly with the peer group. And it becomes very important to conform to and be one with the peer group. Everybody has experienced that, eh? And if they are in the company of a peer group that is positive and that has come from the kind of positive background that we try to establish here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, then fine. But if they get into a crowd where um, perhaps they have negative mindsets about all kinds of different things, including life, we are in a problem. So that stage is a very important stage, and it's very important at that teenage stage to honor their opinions, to, first of all, to listen to what they have to say and to validate them as thinking, valid, valuable, and authentic human beings. But as life progresses into adulthood, a fourth stage unfolds, and we begin to develop the capacity to reflect on ourselves and to face the inevitable tensions between who we are and what the world says we should be. Again, that's a difficult uh, period for a lot of people. Trying to figure out who am I when the world is trying to force me into a mold of what the world considers the correct thing or the proper thing. And it is this stage that can be very, very demanding of our young people. And it's a stage where they need our support and our, our approbation and our listening air. And by the fifth stage of this psychological development, we become more familiar with the paradoxes and the contradictions of life. We think we begin to take it in our stride and we begin to realize that, for example, the, the stories of the Bible that we have been taught were, you know, absolute fact. Well, they couldn't be. All of them couldn't be fact because there are so many contradictions in the Bible that we begin to understand that perhaps some of it is a metaphor for life and some of it is pure myth and some of it is, is fact. So, so we begin to be able to differentiate and discern and... There is still a bit of tension, though, between what we wonder is the truth. What really is the truth for me as a human being? Wanting to belong, wanting to do well, wanting to feel a part of something that's worthwhile and better than I have experienced before. And then the sixth stage takes us to this what Fowler calls universalizing faith. And Fowler thinks that very, not many people arrive at this. It, it really is a, 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 a very evolved state of, of consciousness because it is the faith of, there's a story about a Taoist farmer um, that you may have heard, but it's like every good teaching story, it's worth repeating. It's the faith of this Taoist farmer in ancient um, China. And the farmer had a, a single horse to help him with his, his work on the farm. And one day the horse ran away. And all the villagers are, are gathered and said, oh my goodness, you know, you're ruined. You won't have a horse to work your farm. And the Taoist farmer said, maybe. And next morning the horse returned leading a herd of wild ponies. And the villagers all gathered and said, wow, very good, very good, very good, yay! You're the richest man in the province. You have a whole herd of, of, of horses. And the Doyce farmer said, maybe. And so early the following morning after the herd of horses arrived on the farm, he, the one son got up to try and break in one of the young wild horses. And the horse threw him and he broke his leg. And the villagers all gathered and said, oh, wow, what, you're so bad lucky. You, don't, you won't have your son to help you with the farm. This is really bad luck. And the farmer said, maybe. And the next day, the emperor's army rode into town, thundering up 
raising a cloud of, du of dust, they had come to conscript all the able-bodied uh, young men to go to war. And of course, they couldn't take the farmer's son because he had a broken leg. And the villagers all gathered and said, wow, aren't you the most fortunate person in the world? And the farmer said, maybe. And so the story continues, my friend, um, through all kinds of different experiences, with the farmer always saying, maybe. And the, 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 the moral of the lesson is uh, that we learn in the science of mind is to accept that there is a power and a presence that really has our backs. And even when things don't appear to be working out for us, it ever happened to you? It, it looked like, wow, how could this have happened to me? And it turned out to be for your, your greater good. You know, in the, in the, in the, our work in the prison, a lot of times, uh, participants in that Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program say, every day I get up and I give thanks for my incarceration. And you say, you know, how could you? They said, because, you know, it's in here that I learned I could play guitar. It is in here that I've learned that I, I'm, I'm a teacher, I can teach people, that I have a, a, a skill for in teaching. It is in here that I learned how to relate to people under very adverse conditions. And so this has really been a transformative experience for me. So this is the universalizing faith we're talking about. And children have it, they don't, they don't question. And so, you know, when I look in the mirror and I see Carol Campbell's and mine, little old lady, I say, honey, don't worry about it. The universe has our back. We will make it. You know, don't stop counting the wrinkles and count your blessings. Um, the beautiful Jesus said, we must become as little children. And Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes in the Science of Mind textbook, Page 456, I think it is, and I quote, the life of the child is lived in natural goodness. God is natural goodness. We must return the way we came. We must return the way we came. We must go back to that childlike faith that accepts that we are valid, valuable, and authentic children of God. And so my friends, I guess how the message I want to leave with you this morning is let go of all of those old beliefs that you have to get older, that you have to, you have to get more decrepit and, and just embrace where you are in life right now and try to recapture some of that childlike sense of fun which we know you know, a lot of us have been, we get, we get taught, you're, you're a big person now, come behave like a big person, act your age. And so your assignment, I have an assignment for you, and it's a, a two-part assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it for this coming week, is first of all, to spend 20 minutes, let go of being an adult for 20 minutes, and play a game. When I first gave this assignment, 2017 or 2016, I went out and bought, bought my book for Yo-Yo, and it's on my desk in, uh, in my study at home, and every morning I do, a, I still am not good at it, but I have a bit of fun bouncing the yoga, the Yo-Yo. The so spend 20 minutes just playing a game. And if you have children in your household or grandchildren, or um, you have godchildren, if you have children around, offer to teach them or to play a game with them. Um, the, the, a lot of times the only games they have now are electronic. But can you imagine saying, hey, let's build a house of cards, you know, that thing where you, you, you balance the playing cards on top of each other and see how high up you can go and how, how big you can make the house. Just have some fun. And the other thing I want you to do is to sing a Jamaican folk song or a Jamaican nursery rhyme because, because it again generates in you that feeling of, yes, childlike enjoyment. Um, let me think of one. 
What about Jane and Louisa? Uh, Angela, do you know Jane and Louisa? Play, play for us. It, the words are simple. Jane and Louisa will soon come home, soon come home, soon come home into this beautiful garden. Let's sing together. Jane and Louisa will soon come home, soon. Will you allow me to pick a rose? My love, will you allow me to pick a rose? To pick a rose? To pick a rose? My love, will you allow me to pick a rose? Into this beautiful garden. My love, will you allow me to marry you? My love, will you allow me to marry you? Teach your grandchildren or your godchildren or the children in your neighborhood uh, a Jamaican folk song, a Jamaican nursery rhyme, a Jamaican lullaby. In a blog titled The Importance of Play for Adults, author Margarita um, Tartakovsky, associate editor of World of Psychology, writes, and I quote, our society tends to dismiss play for adults. Play is perceived as unproductive, petty, or even a guilty pleasure. The notion is that once we reach adulthood, it's time to get serious. And between personal and professional responsibilities, there's no time for play. But play is just as pivotal for adults as for children. I'm just listening to our Dr. Bird. Uh, for those of you overseas, she's, this is... She had two young ones, and they flew the nest, and she's been calling for them for the last 10 days. And maybe we should have sung. Chichi bado, some of them are hala, some are ball. Chichi bado, some of them are hala, some are ball. Some are Dr. Bird, some of them are hala, some are ball. Bado, some of them are hala, some are ball. Cling, cling, some of them are hala, some are ball. Hawk, some of them are hala, some are ball. Yes, so in his book, Play, author and psychiatrist Stuart Brown compares play to oxygen. He writes, and I quote, it is all around us, yet goes mostly unnoticed or unappreciated until it's missing. We need to play. We need to go back to playing. It's all around us and we need to just appreciate it. This might seem surprising until you consider everything that constitutes play. Play is art, play is books, play is movies, music, comedy, uh, flirting, daydreaming. So play. Which reminds me of a joke I heard about Mrs. Ronald Reagan, who was asked by a TV interviewer if she had ever contemplated divorce over the course of her long marriage to the former president. And she replied, divorce? No, never. But murder? Many times. <laughs> so my friends, let us affirm, I let the little child within me lead me into pathways of love, laughter, and joy. I let the little child within me lead me into pathways of love, laughter, and joy. I'm not convinced. Let me hear it again. I let the little child within me lead me into pathways of love, laughter, and joy. Together, very good, very good, very good. Yay! Namaste. Friends, let us just say very good, very good, very good, yay! 
Thank you, Reverend John, for that wonderful, inspiring message this morning as he reminds us to embrace the little child within and to go back to having that childlike faith as well as he took us through the seven stages of psychological development. But most importantly, let us in this month of Child Month, do as Reverend John say, embrace the child within, and do our assignments this week. Remember, teach a Jamaican folk song, and continue to just let that faith of a child come out. 